up? It's your boy T Bear Her Reaction. Today's Music Monday. You know, I've been trying to do things to celebrate 50 years of hip hop, which we're doing right now as well, too. So, this other one we're going to do is another one from Digging the Grace that's been out before the 50, 50, 50 uh, years of hip hop. And this is a video video about the not, the one who is the Godfather soul. Uh, who is the Godfather soul, but had one of the biggest contributions in hip hop. Why even. Being part of hip hop as well till later on. That's because his iconic sound was a lot was great for a lot of DJs to make break beats. He was the he was the man that uh whose songs was great for break would become break beats through, through the years as well too and heavily sampled as well too within hip hop till this day. That's none other than the Godfather, so James Brown. So we're gonna check out from Digging the Grace when. James Brown incepted hip hop. Let's get it. Um, before I go for it, I, I want to get the guy's name again. I know I keep calling Mr. Green and Grace. He says his name in the end of the show. I don't want to catch it again. If not, I'll catch it again. again. Let's see. Uh, oh, I can't catch the name. Ooh, that's the another video. Hold on. I'm back. So, yeah, let me get this uh, video rocking. Then we're going to check out when James Brown incepted, incepted hip hop. Basically off his killer drums, so let's get it. James Brown had an influence on early hip hop in a lot of ways, but the most obvious is how early hip hop DJs sampled his music. But was this purely coincidence, or was it a calculated move by the Godfather of Soul to get people to sample his music? Was he trying to expand his Godfather title to encompass other genres of music? Had he tried this before? Where does disco fit in with all of this? Am I asking rhetorical questions in order to preview the rest of the video? Today I'm talking all about James Brown, his influence on early hip hop, and how his comically failed attempt to claim that he invented an entirely different genre of music perfectly set him up to be the godfather of hip hop. James Brown's library of songs is absolutely massive. From 1953 to 2002, the man released 59 studio albums. Wow. That doesn't even include his 49 compilation albums, 15 live albums, and 144 single releases. Navigating James Brown's discography feels like walking into an Ikea on a Sunday afternoon. It's just immediately overwhelming. James Brown had different iterations of his career, but his most successful stretch was from the late 1950s to the early 70s. Once we get past the mid-70s, his popularity begins to decline. Most of the stuff you know is probably from this time period. Now, he did make a few attempts to stay relevant with the shifting music scene in a pretty hilarious way, but we'll get there in a minute. But first, I want to talk about the classic James Brown groove and why it's perfect for hip hop. One of James Brown's big musical innovations was adding space. Most of his songs have very few chords, sometimes only just one. That means there's this bottom layer of drums and then bass, and then there's room for whatever he wants to put on top of that. Sometimes it's horns. Yeah. Sometimes so that explains if you watch the get on a movie with uh Chad with Bozeman, RIP Chad Bowman, uh, RIP James Brown, RIP Chad Bowman, is a part on there. He kept saying, he kept like talking. He he's who's calling it every instrument that the band was playing was a drum, a former drum in a way. Sometimes it's his vocal, which sometimes leans away from a melody and almost becomes rapping. A precursor to rapping, he's not exactly spitting bars. But a classic James Brown song is this incredible groove that's like a couch. Anyone can come sit on it and it's gonna feel good, cause the couch feels good. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You could put horns in there, James Brown screaming, some guitar, whatever you want. That groove is gonna make it feel amazing. To see what I mean, let's take a listen to 1972's Get On The Good Foot. Immediately feels so good. We got horns, we got James Brown. Doesn't feel crowded. He breaks it down a few times. Yeah. Brings in horns. At the right core back to of it. this groove is the syncopated drum beat. Syncopated just means it's not squarely on the beat. If the kick drum, for example, were squarely on the beat, it would sound like this. Nah, that's not it. Instead, we got this. One 
One James Brown song in particular is one of the most sampled hip hop grooves ever, but we're not there yet, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. This groove couch is the bass layer. You can add anything on top that you want and it'll feel good. Horns, James Brown's vocal, and as it turns out, an MC. The origins of hip hop are incredible, and well, to reduce an incredible story down to a few seconds, it's basically this. DJs would play music at parties. Many songs had an isolated drum break that were just four or eight bars with just drums. The DJ started noticing that people would dance the most during these breaks. So thanks to DJs like DJ Cool Herc and Grandmaster Flash, they figured out a way to extend these breaks. Buy two copies of the record and switch back and forth between them, mm -hmm. constantly. This would stretch the short drum break to the length of an entire song. DJ Cool Herc called this the merry-go-round and started doing it in 1972 with the James Brown song Give It Up or Turn It Loose. We got that bass layer of drums, simple bass. Baby, give it up, turn it loose. We got space, very simple chord wise. You can put anything you want on top of this. This groove feels incredible and it makes you want to dance, but after a while of this looping, it's almost begging you to layer something on top of it. Right. So then what starts happening? The guy who's the announcer for the party, the MC, starts hyping the dancers up, starts speaking more rhythmically, Hold and on. they begin rapping over these drum breaks. Hold on, guys. I'm back though. I had to take your little B situation up there for the family and everything. And also, the little guy that was in me earlier in my earlier video, he actually watched one of my videos. So shout out to my little cousin. Damn, man. That's awesome. Anyway, through, through the wife, but still. Anyway, we'll keep going about James Brown. Like I said, this is always some information, no stuff going on just digging grace. I'm actually going to check out another one today as well, too. But let's keep going. As the decade of the 70s progresses, this style gets more and more popular, these techniques take off, and hip-hop is born. As the songs get recorded, the genre evolves, adding additional production on top, other samples, drum machines, etc. But through the 80s, the basic technique stays the same. Start with a great drum break, and build it from there. There's just one problem. Where do you get good drum breaks to sample? Remember, we're talking about the 70s and early 80s. Spotify doesn't exist. Splice isn't a thing. Music was much harder to come by than it is today. So DJs begin digging through crates of old records in search of great drum breaks. This process is called digging in the crates. And if that phrase sounds familiar, well, I mean, I'm trying to wink. I don't know if that's coming through. Can we zoom? Yeah. Another classic early hip-hop song, the one that everybody knows, is the 1979 hit Rapper's Delight by Sugar Hill Gang. It sounds like it's a sample of Good Times by Sheik, but it was actually re-recorded by Sugar Hill Gang. They still got sued though. Yeah, a lot of like the stuff stuff wasn't like actual sample samples. Like I said, before, I said it in a previous video though. It was just like a drum. It was like an iteration, their own little rendition of the sample or the songs though. But like I said, I can understand them still being sued. <laughs> In many ways, hip hop was a reaction to disco. And I love Rapper's Delight because it's a bridge between the two genres. You've got one of the biggest disco songs re recorded with rapping on top, and Rapper's Delight was one of the first mainstream hip hop hits. Speaking of disco, before we talk about James Brown and hip hop, we need to rewind a few years and talk about James Brown and disco. Because. Remember how we said James Brown's music started to decline in popularity in the mid 70s? That directly coincides with the rise of disco. And disco is a whole different group. Yeah. Let's take a listen to one of the most famous disco songs, Stayin' Alive by the Bee Gees. So notice the groove. Very straightforward. Four on the floor kick drum. No syncopation at all. In fact, if it were syncopated, it would sound like this. By the way, if you want an insane story about the Bee Gees, the Beatles, and Earth, Wind, and Fire, watch this video. Disco is a completely different groove from James Brown. With that four on the floor oh, kick, there's I'm not like, room for I'm much like, else. What, what video? Yeah, it came out wire, <laughs> fire. All right. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's a lot of other stuff taking up space. This is less of a groove couch and more of a groove lazy boy. There's just not as much room. 
I'm really trying to make this analogy work. But that didn't stop James Brown. Even though his music wasn't as popular, he was determined to make his mark on disco by not only releasing disco songs, but claiming he invented disco. Here's the title track from the 1979 album, The Original Disco Man. This song features that chorus with cheesy singers singing that he's the original disco man with the original disco band, and his groove is where it all began. But is it? On the verse, he claims that in 1955, gotta, people were dancing to I all kind of jive. Man, but I in 19... I kind of want to hear the verse, because I gotta imagine James Brown singing on a disco song like that. I don't know. 66, you all got down with his funky licks. I'll admit I love the rhyming here, but that's just not true, James. The groove is completely different. On original Disco Man, you've got a four on the floor groove. That's not what a classic James Brown groove is. James Brown's attempt to rewrite history didn't work. Not only did no one believe him, but this album was released in July of 1979, the same month as the infamous Disco Demolition Night. That was the night that a couple radio DJs in Chicago who hated disco invited people to bring disco records to a baseball game to destroy. They blew up a bunch of records, people rushed the field, the riot police were called. It was a mess, but it was effective. The popularity of disco tanked after this event. All right, so maybe you're thinking, how does this relate to hip hop at all? Well, it's because of this incident, James Brown's failure to make himself relevant to disco, that he learned his lesson. He wouldn't make the same mistake twice. He was ready to stake his claim as the godfather of hip hop. If you haven't guessed already, the James Brown song that's one of the most sampled drum breaks in hip hop history is 1970's Funky, Funky Drummer. Yeah. But there's something strange going on here. Funky Drummer was released as a single in March of 1970. But when Funky Drummer was released, it didn't do that well. It didn't crack the top 50, and because James Brown has a million other songs and albums, it was largely out of the public eye wow. or ear, I guess, for years. Again, then it it's always like the song that didn't do well or failed gets a lot of pop or or just gets a lot of popularity from fans or like or get really get heavily sampled or stuff like that like it's like this it's always like crazy how the fail stuff and then be sometimes stuff that's like really popular is is the like a, that that what were failure at their original release like i always said um i forgot what video i did before that i talked about and i mentioned how um scarface was a box office bomb but it is a cult classic to a lot of fans it's a it's heavily it's heavily quoted it's heavily popular but it originally was a, bo a box of a bomb it's crazy about uh, stuff like that in 1986 james brown releases the compilation album in the jungle groove and funky drummer is the second track oh. why would he pick a failed single to be the second track on a compilation album he's releasing in 1986 in the middle of a gold rush of hip-hop djs searching for obscure drum breaks again rhetorical question he did it for these couple bars That's it, just those bars, that's all you need. James Brown knows what's up. He knows exactly what he's doing what he here. Doing? He knows that even though this song didn't do well, that drum groove is infectious. And if he can just put it in the ears of hip hop DJs, they'll take it and run with it, looping it for hours on end. Sure, I'm speculating here, but here's why I think this is true. Because just a couple tracks later on the same album, old JB hits us with Funky Drummer oh, parentheses bonus beat reprise, ah. which is just an edited loop of the Funky Drummer drum break with the occasional phrase from James. Ain't a bucket. <laughs> Ain't a bucket. Rhetorical questions only. Ain't a bucket. It's wow. 1986. James Brown knows that hip hop DJs are searching for great deep cut drum breaks. So he gives them one. He also knows that they're gonna loop it, so he went ahead and did that too. James Brown is begging to be sampled. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it worked. Let's take a listen to some of the samples. <laughs> Yeah. 
jabbing rap is life yep. where I'm from. Where I'm from? I might play with Izzy where I'm from. That's, that's, drummer was that last drum by uh, Diggle Plans and Slept Doing Joint. That joint tough. Originally released in 1970, but it wasn't until 1986's re release that everyone started sampling it. Hmm. This break has been sampled by a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. WhoSampled.com lists 1,749 mm. instances of this song being sampled. In addition to the art. Speaking of that, what's up with the website? Why well, it's been acting funny lately, though? I, I was able to get it uh, some places I can get the website from other places I'm not sure. Artists I just played, we're talking Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, Most Def, Nicki Minaj, Slum Village, Beastie Boys, De La Soul, Ice Cube, Big Daddy Kane, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Criss Cross, A Tribe Called Quest, Pete Rock and CL Smooth, Two Live Crew. If it sounds like I'm just naming every early hip hop artist, that's the point. We're just talking about this one drum break from this one song. Some of these just sample the drums, others James Brown's vocals but my favorite is when James Brown got high on his own supply and sampled himself for the 1988 album I'm, I'm real. real this is James Brown's often not talked about mm -hmm. new jack swing hip-hop ask album he's not mm -hmm. quite singing as mm -hmm. much as a little got more rapping but also got, got produced by full force yep James you don't have to do this the album opens with the title track and James Brown calling out all the copycats out there and claiming he's the original. My favorite line is, all you people think you got pull, better take my voice off your records till I'm paid in full. He knows he's being sampled and he wants to get paid. In another track called Interview, which is just a 44 second interview, when asked if hip hop beats are the same as his music, he replies, the beat is things I did 20 years ago. Yeah, man, you basically spoon fed funky drummer to everybody and now you're mad that they took the bait? The weirdest full circle moment on the album is on the song She Look All Kinda Good, where he samples funky drummer. You don't have to do this. <laughs> so, Your Honor, if I may, James Brown had a massive career through the late 50s all the way through the early so 70s. Good. But he started to lose relevance in the late 70s because of disco. Oh, so what does he do? He makes a disco album and claims he invented it. Which, to be clear, he did not. The James. grooves, as we've established, are completely Let's different. Go. Disco dies with Demolition Night. Or maybe because of the release of Original Disco Man. And James Brown's attempt to be relevant with a new genre fails. So then it's a few years later, and hip hop is blowing up. Well, old JB's learned his lesson. This time he decides to go a different route. He goes the Inception route. If he can make them think it's their idea, he's Jill Scott. Golden. So he digs up a great drum break from an obscure failed song, re-releases it along with a three minute loop of the drum break, which is exactly what hip hop DJs are searching for, and he waits. Oh, the DJs take the bait. They start sampling the drum break and making new songs. Then James Brown pulls up about two years later, again claiming, oh, this whole other genre of music? Yeah, I invented that. Except this time, he's got proof. See, oh, you sampled his music. James Brown's the godfather of hip hop. All of this is just dripping with irony, considering that Clyde Stubblefield, right, the drummer Stubblefield. who actually played the drum break on Funky Drummer, was never credited and never paid royalties. Wow. And he hated the song. No wonder like, he's getting a lot of, you know, like, a lot of, um, you know, they released, they did just release up, like, drums for him, like, drum samples, drum kits built for him as well, too, to pay off the royalties. That's all, awesome. that's interesting, but that's messed up right there. Damn. This is an incredible drum break, and hip-hop would not be the same without it. The groove feels so good, it's that comfy couch that you can build anything on, including building a hip-hop song and rapping on top. James Brown was the godfather of soul. Was he the original disco man, the godfather of disco? No, he wasn't. Was he the godfather of hip-hop, though? Is the funky drummer break a crucial piece of early hip-hop? Did he have massive influence over the genre, despite his later comical attempt to claim that he invented it? Am I just gonna keep asking rhetorical questions until the end credits come in? For more music history videos, check out the rest of my channel, and also, hey, Drop a comment. Say what's up. I mentioned that crazy story about the Bee Gees, the Beatles, and Earth. Right, cool. So there you have it, though. Um, when James Brown set the hit and set the hip hop, this was a good read right there as well, too. Good little reel to what watching in some insight on that as well, too. Like I said, James Brown definitely had his, his was heavily sampled and then took that one song right there. And like I said, it's always crazy that the failed 
uh, something that was a, a filler originally becomes iconic later on in life, though. So, yeah. So, that's something to say is, is never give up. That's all I'm going to say. Well, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.